Cancer and Biochemistry 18, Entering the Citric Acid Pathway from Acetyl-CoA. Hello, it's November 7, 2018. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, here again in my ongoing video series on cancer and biochemistry. In each one of these videos, I cover an aspect of cancer metabolism that includes technical aspects of biochemistry, as well as relevant strategies to your life and how you can best defend yourself and your family against the major risk factors leading to cancer. We have talked about general aspects of the metabolic pathways shown in this chart, courtesy of Sigma Aldrich. We have seen that the mitochondrion, this yellow shape here, must be kept in great shape and abundance in your body in order to allow normal, healthy cell metabolism to come straight down here where you want it. We also saw that when pathways inside this mitochondria are blocked, then metabolism cannot come this way and is forced over here to the side into this cancer pathway from pyruvate to lactate. We saw that there are a number of the B vitamins that are instrumental in bringing metabolism down here into the mitochondria and then also facilitating this process, the electron transport chain. Then, in a recent video, we saw that the citric acid cycle, which is a necessary part of normal healthy metabolism here, requires a lot of different amino acids in order to keep functioning well, as we see in the slide from BioInfo. Where do we get those amino acids, you might wonder? It turns out that we get them from the proteins we eat. Some of them we can make inside of our bodies, but really only if we have eaten enough whole natural foods to have the necessary raw materials. Let me warn you, a junk food diet is not going to give you the materials you need to run the citric acid cycle. It just won't get you very far. So let's look at some of these amino acids now, the ones that drive the citric acid cycle. Why does all of this happen inside the mitochondria? Well, these compact factories contain all the enzymes needed to drive all of these chemical reactions. We have here all the enzymes we need to oxidize the fatty acids to acetyl-CoA. And we have the enzymes we need for oxidative breakdown of amino acids to acetyl-CoA, as well as for some of the other intermediates in the cycle. We talked before about how it doesn't seem to make sense to have a circular pathway here if we just keep coming around to the beginning. I mean, we see a linear path, a destination, with both glycolysis here and the electron transport chain here. So why does the citric acid cycle go in a circle? It is because we break down those amino acids in order to harvest the products of the cycle. So let's now look at the three amino acids that go directly to become acetyl-CoA. Those are isoleucine, leucine, and tryptophan. Isoleucine looks like this and is found in these foods pictured here. The leucine molecule, on the other hand, looks like this and is found in these foods pictured here. We remember tryptophan from a previous video. That's the one that is abundant in Turkey and is what causes us to feel content and drowsy after Thanksgiving dinner. Then there is another way to get to acetyl-CoA. That is by using the following amino acids, leucine, lysine, and phenylalanine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. To first convert to acetoacetyl-CoA and then to acetyl-CoA, three of those amino acids I have not mentioned before. Lysine is abundant in meats, and it is an amino acid best known among the public for its role against the herpes virus. You may have seen lysine sticks of lip balm at the health food store that people use when they have a cold sore from herpes virus 1. Phenylalanine is an interesting amino acid. It must be avoided by people with a metabolic disease called phenylketonuria. That is because this particular disease does not allow the body to break down phenylalanine. There is an enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase that is missing in their mitochondria, so they cannot break down phenylalanine to tyrosine. Therefore, they must get only the bare minimum of phenylalanine in their foods and no more at all. Protein intake has to be limited for these individuals. The problem is that phenylalanine and related molecules build up to levels that are dangerous to the developing brain. This is a very hard disease to live with, but fortunately, an easy lab test for newborns rules it out and those who test positive can generally keep the diet controlled well enough to live with the disease. This disease, phenylketonuria, is relatively rare, showing up in one in 10,000 infants. If you had phenylketonuria, or if any of your family had it, you would definitely know by now. 
So, for the rest of us, unless there is a sensitivity to it, there is no need to fear a typical dietary amount of phenylalanine. For the rest of us, tyrosine is the amino acid that is the product of phenylalanine and is the last amino acid on this list. Tyrosine has a hugely important role in the body. It is the precursor of our catecholamines. What are catecholamines, you might ask? Did anybody ever jump out at you and say, boo? Sorry, it's close to Halloween and I couldn't resist. Anyway, when I did that, I made your kidneys excrete just a wee bit of the stress neurotransmitters, if you were scared, and epinephrine and norepinephrine. Another catecholamine is dopamine, which the general public is coming to appreciate as one of the happiness neurotransmitters. Tyrosine is also necessary for our thyroid hormones, so that is a hugely important role. Then, as we see, it is also the last of the five that we'll mention as going to acetoacetyl-CoA, which will then go to acetyl-CoA. And now, let's us join in to the citric acid cycle. Here are some foods that are high in tyrosine. As always, for a specific nutritional program that is most appropriate for you as an individual, given your activity level, age, and medical history, I refer you to your local naturopathic physician. Here are some resources for finding such an ND or NMD in your area, naturopathic.org and primarydoctor.org. Well, that is all that I have for you at the moment. This is Dr. Colleen Huber. It is November 7, 2018, and thanks for watching.